This recording is going to show how you can use the stochastic simulation feature in WMS to do batch execution of HEC1 models. So in other words, rather than having to run HEC1 manually over and over and over if you want to change the parameter of precipitation or curve number, you can set WMS up to do a batch of lots of different values uh, all at once. So starting with a model that already has curve number defined, it's got an area, we've got DEM, if I wanted to run a HEC1 model, I'd need to specify precipitation. So I'll put in, just as an example, three inches of precipitation and using a type 2 storm. The loss method, you can see the curve number of 72. I'll come back to this later when I want to do a batch of uh, different curve numbers, but I'm going to leave that as is right now. Uh, unit hydrograph, I'm going to have to calculate the... Um, Let's say if we're going to use the SCS method for calculating the lag time, which will therefore define the uh, time of concentration. Um, okay, so we've got everything uh, defined that we need to run HEC1. I could run, uh, run HEC1, and it'll automatically execute it and bring in the, uh, the hydrograph. So, you know, it tells us the peak. I could make it run a little bit longer if I wanted to see all of that going back down to zero. Um, but what if I wanted to run it again at a different amount of precipitation? I just did three inches, so now what if I want to see what happens when it's 3.5? Okay, so I can just run it again. All right, and it gives me, here's the old one, here's the new one. It would get tedious if you wanted to do 10 of them, right? So what you can do instead is, uh, I'm going to delete the old uh, hydrograph. I don't want to look at it anymore. All right, so I'll go into the precipitation. I, I'm going to put negative 1, and that's just so that WMS knows it's going to look somewhere else to get the precipitation data. All right, so now under HEC1, I'm going to stochastic modeling and I'm going to define a stochastic model and let's say I want it to do 10 different precipitation values. So add variable, the precipitation is what I'm going to be modeling and the key of negative 1 tells it that that's where it should be looking elsewhere for precipitation data. Now it'll sort of automatically pick what, uh, it fills this in automatically. It's coming up with kind of a, a distribution of values if you wanted to have a normal distribution of what the va the value should be randomly but maybe I already know that I want to find out uh, it's going to be 2 inches of rain, 2.5 inches of rain, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 5, 6, and 6.5. So I'm going to manually define what the precipitation values are going to be. If I click OK and then run stochastic model, uh, I'm just going to click OK and it automatically starts running through simulation 3, 4, 5. It runs HEC1 as many times as it needs to to go through the batch that you've defined and it will open up the hydrograph and so there's all the different values. You can see the range of different flow rates and so on. Uh, if you wanted to save that to an Excel file, then you can save this the same way as if you weren't doing stochastic. You right click and you're going to export text to the file. Uh, I'll just call this um, stochastic one uh, text all right and uh, I'm going to have it give me a table with points slash subsets and export and I'll open this up to show you what it looks like all right so Windows sized writes the hardest part. All right, uh, I'm going to open up that text file that it just made.
and uh, I'm going to it's delimited with spaces comma all right that ought to do it okay so then what it has is uh, it it's a little bit weird the order that it goes in it goes backwards so this is the time and then this is the hydrograph so it's the the runoff amount you know this is CFS um, but I'm, it, it duplicates the time for all of these, so I don't need all these extra times. I'm going to delete them. All right, we don't need this one. So here's the time, and then time in minutes. And then this one was p equals 6.5. It does it. It shows the last one first. This was p equals 6. This was 5.5, 5, 4.5, 4, 3.5, 5, 3, 2.5, and 2. I think that was, you know, if we look back in the uh, stochastic parameters that we set up, it was going from, yeah, 2 to 6.5. And so if you want it to build the columns so that it's increasing, you'd need to start with the biggest one and go the other way because it, it makes the text file in the, it shows the last one first. And how do I know that? Well, if you just look at the, the peak flows, they're biggest over here. The biggest peak flows were for this one on the far left, and that's obviously going to be for the largest rainfall, the biggest precipitation amount. All right, so that shows if you wanted to do stochastic modeling using precipitation. Let's say that instead of that, you wanted to do a a variety of different curve numbers so I'm going to delete those um, so I'm going to go back to having some normal three inches of rain and this time I'm going to put the negative one in my curve number as a flag that lets it know it should look for the curve number in the stochastic modeling parameters and so I'm going to delete this precipitation one that I had in here we'll delete that and add the curve number and uh, we'll do 10 simulations again um, and it automatically if um, if my starting point is 75 sort of the midpoint and I specify a minimum and maximum and it comes up with a normal distribution these values are randomly selected um, trying to approximate a, a normal distribution and that can be useful you know if you're doing 100 simulations and you want to see uh, what the range of probabilities is but if instead I want to cover a spectrum that I already am comfortable with if I just want to know what's going to happen between 65, 66 and so on alright then I can run that stochastic model again and it'll take a few minutes to a few seconds to shuffle through it and uh, when it's finished it will put together the hydrograph that demonstrates the range of runoff values. So you can see what impact that spread of curve numbers is going to have. The low, the high, and if we wanted to export that, it's going to be export text data file. I'll specify the location. This is going to be stochastic. and be sure and switch it to data and labels table with points slash subsets. That's uh, how you define what's going to be a column and what's going to be a row. So I export that and I can uh, again open up this one, the new one, and I want to make sure that it picks up on those commas there. I'll delete these rows. So this is going to be time minutes and then if we think it goes backwards, this is going to, the first column is going to correspond to the last one we put in, 74. So that should be the highest runoff. So it's going to be the highest curve number. So CN equals 74. And then I'm going to delete all the extraneous times. We don't need to know the time for all of them because it stays the same. All right. All right. So this was then CN of 73, 72, 71, 70. Okay. 
And so you'd notice that we have the highest runoff for the highest curve number, so that does make sense uh, conceptually that we'd have the lowest runoff for the lowest curve number. So the last thing I'll show just to wrap it up is what happens if you want to have both curve number and precipitation randomly varying. Um, so I'm going to delete my hydrographs, open it up and put in the negative one flag for both precipitation and curve number. Alright, so go back into stochastic modeling. Um, I'm going to do a hundred of them and I'm going to have a range of both curve numbers and I'm going to delete this curve number one because I want it to this time actually do the normal distribution. So I'm going to add curve number and add precipitation. Okay, so the precipitation, I want the range of precipitation values to start, I want it to be centered around uh, three inches and the minimum will be two and the maximum will be um, six and the standard deviation will be one and no normal distribution and it automatically fills all these randomly selected um, precipitation values according to these statistical parameters that we've specified. Alright, so now uh, I'm going to execute it and it will take a long time to run through them. So maybe I'll pause the recording as it does that. Simulation 2, 3, 4. Alright, so it finished doing all those calculations, all 100 of them, and if you look, it, it brings up the hydrograph, and there's just a huge array, you know, it's randomly combined a variety of precipitation values and curve numbers, and so you might have a combination, you know, this really low um, hydrograph is probably a, a low precipitation value with a low curve number, whereas this really big one uh, you know, worst case scenario is if you happen to have a much uh, bigger rainstorm than you're expecting maybe and the curve number is at the high end of the range and you know so this is a probability distribution plot that shows you the range of possible values and so the stochastic modeling tool is a very powerful way of dealing with uncertainty and getting the, the range of possibilities that might actually come out of a watershed um, and it's also just a uh, if you ever if you want to repeat a model a lot of times it'll save you the hassle of having to do it manually so it's a nice tool